Flooding continues to affect parts of South Africa, with KwaZulu Natal reporting 25 deaths since the beginning of the torrential rains. Dozens of residents have been evacuated from low lying parts of Ladysmith CBD after the Kliprafir Dam burst its banks on Sunday night, resulting in severe flooding. Flash flooding has also been reported in some on some roads rather in Edenvale. We get an understanding on why cities keep getting submerged. We're joined by Professor Kaitano. Dube, he's the Associate Professor for Ecotourism Management at Val University of Technology. Thank you very much, sir, for availing yourself this afternoon. So what should we understand about these developments, right? So especially with these scenes of um, cities keep getting submerged, rather, is that it's nature at play or there's some element of negligence on our part? Uh, good afternoon, Dudu and your viewers. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay, so we, we have got uh, different kind of problems to, uh, depending on the geographic locations. Uh, so you have got flooding that is happening in, in, in coastal towns, uh, which, which is particularly sometimes different as compared to the inland. Uh, so just to get back to your question, so you have got a combination of human factors and also climatic factors. As we all are aware, uh, the AR6 or the six assessment report did confirm that we are going to expect to see uh, increased uh, flooding episodes, particularly in, in parts of South Africa and also Southern Africa as a whole. So what that then means is that we, we have got a, a, a natural uh, 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 problem that, that, that within the form of climate change and also in, in the form of increasing rainfall intensity. That you've got also a bearing on uh, particularly urban areas with, which are poorly uh, managed. So when we talk service delivery, most of the time the first thing that comes to mind is uh, about water, is about sanitation, uh, which, which is fair and fine. But one of the things that we are seeing, particularly with the, with the extreme weather events that we are experiencing, is that our drainage system is not up to stretch. But not only the drainage system, we are also not enforcing uh, the environmental legislation that is there uh, in urban areas which, uh, of course, poses a lot of people uh, to being vulnerable to these extreme weather events when they do okay. Uh, so you see particularly the most affected people, uh, particularly by these floods, are those people that stay in informal settlements. You, you were right, you were talking about Edinburgh, and also you were speaking to uh, the, the events that we have seen in KZ and, and in East London, uh, where we just completed a study that was jointly done with the uh, University of South Africa. So one of the things that we, we actually found is that there is a high number of informal settlements that are actually located uh, in, in along streams and waterways. And because we put in a lot of these jungle structures, it increases the um, amount of runoff that then occurs when there's, when, when there's rain, which uh, increases the chances and vulnerability uh, of flooding to occur. So you have got a combination of human factors and also um, uh, uh, natural factors that are at play. Mm. You shudder to think um, what would happen if we had weather patterns like you see sometimes in the U.S. with tornadoes or what happened now recently uh, in Tonga. You mentioned environmental legislation that is not being adhered to. What does it say? Okay, so there the, the are specific, uh, specifications in terms of where people can, can reside. If you are in the coastal areas, there is a, a buffer zone that is actually allowed to be, supposed to be given. But we see these constantly being broken, both by the rich and also the poor. Uh, we concluded a study in, in, in Cape Town where we realized, particularly in Kailicha, uh, you realize that a lot of people are actually occupying a sand dune. What that then tells you is once you have got a huge uh, downpour, what happens is that those sand dunes, because they are, they, they are not stable, they wash away, which causes a disaster. Mm. You've also mentioned the element, um, the human element of negligence, right? So with uh, the situation um, in Ladysmith in KwaZulu-Natal, we understand that a river burst its banks following heavy rains. Are there contingency plans? Uh, I mean, obviously there's nothing you can do when it rains and, you know, a river goes over capacity. But do we not plan for such things that when a river bursts its banks, what should happen? I, I think uh, we, we are still living in the olden days. 
we, we, we got our climate focus for uh, SADC, the whole of SADC, and it was quite clear that uh, parts of South Africa were expected and part of Lady Smith were, were, were expected to receive above normal rainfall. So what, what has happened is because of the La Nina situation, we had a La Nina event uh, last year and also we had a, a tropical cyclone that affected part of uh, KZN. But we did not plan uh, for, for such events because uh, our disaster management is still reactive in terms of mm. we, they react when things happen. But there's nothing that really happens uh, after, after, after an incident. So if you look at Lady Smith, for example, you realize that that town is actually surrounded by a number, uh, a number of streams, uh, which, which means to say that then if you have got a, a higher than normal expected rainfall compounded with urbanization, you then have a, a, a crisis situation like what we are seeing right now. So in terms of our urban legislation, uh, in terms of enforcing our, 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 our urban uh, legislation, we need to be seen to be doing exactly what we are supposed to do. And also in terms of cleaning our urban areas. So I, I've been going around South Africa in terms of, I think I've been to almost every town that you can think of. But you see mounds and mounds of waste and garbage that is not collected. So when you have got a, any heavy rainfall, a, what happens is that all that waste is washed away and it clogs the drainage system. And that, that becomes a challenge, particularly in terms, of, uh, in terms of some river system. They don't operate as it were. And we also see that we are experiencing uh, prolonged droughts. So what we have also realized is that due to prolonged droughts, uh, the waterways that, that you can also see, people tend to occupy waterways. Particularly in Msinga, you will see that there are quite a number of houses that, that are on the waterway, which poses them to a risk of a disaster. I was going to ask you who's responsible for making sure that this works, um, but I think I found the answer from what you've been saying. It's all of us, right? Even right down to the littering or picking up your litter. Thank you very much for helping us make sense of that. Professor Kaitano Dube is the Associate Professor of Tourism uh, Geography at the Val University.